Oh god. <laughs> you have no idea how big this tortoise looks from here. Ugh. Try to get up out of here. Ugh. Hi. What'd you do? Yeah. So, the depth of this burrow is a testament to just how hot southern New Jersey can get because these tortoises will dig these burrows to escape the elements and escape the heat. So when Dixie feels too hot, even though she's an African spurred tortoise, she feels too hot. She goes way down here and the temperature change is unbelievable. It's like air conditioning down here about where my feet are and I still can't touch the back of this burrow. So I'm gonna have to get out of here and measure and see just how far you went down. You gonna let me out? Let's get my tape measure, see how deep this is. All right, let's see here. Oh, okay. So to the mouth of this burrow, eight feet. This tortoise dug this burrow eight feet deep. That's insane. Now, reports suggest that these tortoises can go as far as 100 feet once they get down to the depth they want to go at. So realistically, I would say it's more like eight feet long and maybe about 30, 36 inches deep. That's really incredible what they're capable of doing. And similar to gopher tortoises in Africa, when these animals build these burrows, they're helping out other species of wildlife too. They create an underground refuge for them where, like I said, it's so much cooler. So I gotta keep tabs on this. Lucky for us, Dixie went that way, which means she is still perfectly safe because that's our property and it's where the other pens are. So if she were to try to come up in a different direction, she would be totally fine where she comes up. Uh, and generally, this is the mouth of the burrow. This is what she's gonna use to enter and exit. A lot of these animals end up displaced and end up becoming invasive in areas uh, because they escape. People don't take into consideration just how deep they can go and that's how they get out of their pens. And maybe that's originally what happened with Dixie because if you've been following us, you know that she was a rescue. She was found walking around in New Jersey. That's how we got her. So uh, good job, Dixie. I'm gonna leave your burrow alone because clearly she feels safe in it, but I gotta keep tabs. She starts going in a different direction, gonna have to take action and fill it in to protect her. And uh, it's pretty amazing. We got a lot of work to do today because we're gonna get caught up with all of our giant tortoises. That's <laughs> so another thing about sulcata tortoises is that they could be very territorial and uh, or maybe she's just being impatient. Hang on Dixie, I'm, wor I'm working on it here. Holy cow. These are powerful animals. Do not underestimate them. <laughs> but all she really wants is just a good meal. And right now she's getting some organic dandelion. And she is wasting no time shoving her face into it. There you go, lady. Enjoy. And I'm so sorry that I didn't have this to you sooner. These animals can eat and eat and eat. And at one point in the spring, this enclosure was lush and beautiful with plenty of grass and weeds growing. But she quickly destroyed all of it. And she's also been working on taking down the big grasses. These two are still pretty full, but there's one down there that she's basically annihilated with the help of her enclosure mate, Sal. Not quite giants, but they are certainly not a small tortoise species. Our redfoot tortoises share this entire huge pen with our young Galapagos tortoises. And uh, they have some of the best personalities, in my opinion, when it comes to the tortoises of the world. Redfoot tortoises just show no fear of their human keepers once they get to know you. And this female right here, she just knew we were gonna feed. She knew we were in the area. She could sense that we were here. So she came right over to the end of the fence here and she, she beat everybody else to it, but I can hear them all moving around in there. So this is a good time to uh, 
check out the Galapagos tortoises, as I said, they're in here, and see how they've been growing. Because even though we're not rushing them, they're getting big fast. <laughs> The red foot tortoises are just so bald. See what I'm talking about? And I just had one bite my foot. Excuse me, bud. Over here. What I'm trying to do is take a look at our young galops. Look at that. That's the smaller one. This is Sally. And if you remember, we got these tortoises, I think it was September 2021. So this September will have them two years. And in just two years, look at the sheer size of these animals already. And Sally is considerably smaller than Jack, even though they were hatched right around the same time. And these came from uh, Three J's Tortoise Sanctuary down in Florida. They were a donation to us. But look at how beautifully smooth they're growing. And you'll notice how uh, caked in mud this one is. And that's because she's been spending a lot of time in these artificial ponds we made for them. Because these species, which by the way, are part of the same genus, Kelonoidus, the Redfoot and the Galapagos. Well, they do love water and they love creating wallows in them and they will eat plenty of aquatic vegetation along with the terrestrial vegetation. So I won't take up too much more of your time, but look at that, and that shell is so rock solid already. Amazing. But pretty soon, before we know it, you will be too big to live side by side with Redfoot tortoises. There you go, have a snack. See Jack over there making his or her way over to one of the ponds. So I'm gonna check on that one next. There's Jack, our larger Galapagos tortoise, loving this little pond here. And you can see they really destroyed the aquatic vegetation in here, the water lilies and other things that were growing. They're just helping themselves to what they need to. And what's really nice is the humidity here in South Jersey and the fact that they have access to these waterways, that's keeping their shells growing so smooth. So I'm really, really happy to see how the Galops are coming out. They're getting along beautifully with the Redfoots while they're still in a manageable size. But uh, we've got some plants to make because these guys or girls are gonna get big real fast. Let's move on. Ever see a tortoise beg? to be animal friends. So Mickey, our giant Aldabra tortoise, is going to be 10 years old this fall. That's right, we've had this tortoise since it was a little baby, only about four inches long when we first got her, and she is just packing on the pounds and getting bigger every year. Her personality is bold, and you know what? Mickey's been pretty bold since she was a hatchling. But this sure is a lot of tortoise to handle. Again, as I've said in many videos, Mickey is nowhere near done growing. She's about 100 plus pounds right now, but fully grown. Mickey could get up to 400. If Mickey was a male, you'd be talking even more. So there's been a lot of preparation to house her because they get big fast too. It's like with the Galapagos tortoises, even though we're not trying to rush their growth because that's not healthy for them to begin with. Well, they grow and they grow and they grow because by nature, the goal is to get out of that fragile size as quickly as possible because an animal that gets to be the size of an Aldabra or Galapagos virtually has no natural predators, unless you're of course a human, and that's not really all that natural now, is it? But Mickey is just an absolute joy and it's been so much fun raising her. And I love showing her to you guys because this, look at this, just look at how awesome this tortoise is turning out. See how she lifts up when you scratch her back? <laughs> and like the Glops and the Redfoots. Mickey lives with these radiated tortoises right now. And radiated tortoises are not a small tortoise. They can grow to be 18 inches. So while that is nowhere near the size of an Aldabra or a Galapagos or even a Sulcata, that's still a lot of tortoise too. So these animals aren't happy just living in a box. You know, they need expansive enclosures, both indoors and out. They need plenty of enrichment. And what's nice about radiateds and Aldabras is they are very social. So uh, there's no issues with them here. Sometimes the radiateds get a little territorial and push each other around, especially the females when they're looking to nest. But other than that, this is one big harmonious enclosure with some epic, epic tortoises. So I better empty the rest of this box because they're gonna finish these two piles very quickly. <laughs> 